Well, now, I really wish you know how happy I am that you clicked on this video and you always come back to watch my videos. I'm so delighted. For those guys who have been with me since then, thank you very much. And if you're watching me for the first time, howdy. Thank you for this and coming for this channel. And by the way, my name is Joseph. Talk about money investment, how to grow, store, and expand that money. And if you want to know much about things to do with money, I do post a video each and every day. Stick around. And if you don't want to miss any of my good videos, down below there is a small button written subscribe hit that magical button like the video and make sure that you comment down below by the way tell me where you're watching me from let's get into the business now today we're going to talk about six things that are useless to buy in the year 2024 not only in the year 2024 henceforth depends on when you're watching this video if you're watching it at 2030 whatever the point is they still remain to be the useless things okay now let's get to the business now the point number one the one thing that is one useless thing to buy with your money is something called alcohol alcohol you see guess what it has been useless it is useless it's forever gonna remain useless you know why it does not only take money out of your pocket but also deters your normal body functions into a point whereby it kind of hides you from the reality and when you don't back you go back to the reality and and by the way you see i've all met some guys who say hey guess what i'm facing a lot of stresses and anxiety about life i'm a bit confused i just want to drink and get myself high and all those kind of things guess what happening you kind of bury your head into the sand and you just assume like things are okay. Things are not okay. See, face the problem. Okay, there are some people who drink for the purposes of entertainment. There's a whole of a different case. But again, as much as you're drinking for either case, whether you're doing for so the entertainment or you're doing so to bury your head under the sand, the point remains you're supposed to do it at a budgeted amount of money. And if you ask me, I would say, just put it aside. Just keep it away. The point remains alcohol. I have seen alcohol with my own eyes. And I bet you watching this video, you can actually give an attest to this. You've seen some families divorcing because of alcohol. You've seen people destroying their lives because of alcohol. By the way, in Kenya, I was watching a certain vi video somewhere. I think it's going around someone, a certain guy who sold his land for like 2 million. That's like 20,000 USD. The guy went to the coast, that the Mombasa area and what have you, right? The guy went there for... <laughs> Having fun and what have you can you just imagine the guy was having fun with ladies and alcohol and what the next minute the money was not there, it was stolen. You see, it impairs your judgment, it impairs your decision making. Be very cautious and be very careful. I would say this if you must take it, I repeat this, if you must take it, you must fall under these three categories. Either you're an old person, you see, in an African society, the people who are allowed to drink alcohol are old people. Number two is either you are an individual who has already invested, you're already drinking your passive income and what have you. Or number three, you're dumb. That's what we say in African society. Is either you fall under those three categories. So ask yourself, why are you drinking? And if you can be able to answer yourself in those three categories, then you can go ahead and drink. But I've seen with my own eyes and you can attest to that. This thing has actually destroyed people's lives tremendously. So it's good to be very keen and cautious when you're approaching it, especially using your money. Otherwise, you can ruin your life in big time. Let's get to the point number two. The point number two, or rather the second thing that is actually useless to buy, they are called the raffle tickets. Raffle tickets. Uh, raffle tickets, or we can say gambling. You can say gambling. You can call it betting, right? And in total, say, let, let me, in total words, you can just say it's called luck. You see, you're out there buying luck. I always tell people, come on, my friend, there's no way you can um, twist the luck. You cannot control the luck. And you cannot invest on the basis of, hey, I believe I'm lucky, I'm lucky, I'm lucky. See, you can't, you, you, we can't tell. And remember this, and never forget these words, okay? Hard work, there are two things that makes you successful in life, okay? It's, like, it's an intersection between two things, okay? This is hard work, this is hard work, and this is luck. So until these two things meet and intercede at this particular point, when they intersect at this particular point, that's when we say you are successful, okay? This is when we say you are success. That's the success intersection between a hard work and luck. So what you can control in your life is the hard work. You can control how hard you can work. You can control what you eat, what you don't eat, how much you save, where you invest, and how you invest, your time, your consistency, your sacrifice, and all those things. All that one falls under the carpet or basket of hard working. The luck you cannot control. If nobody in this world world has the luck. The reason why people go buy the raffle tickets, the betting and the gambling, whatever, they are trying to actually draw the luck towards their end. And in the process of, you see, the moment you try to um, twist the luck in your, you're relying on things we call them um, probabilities. And you can just imagine how many people are buying that thing. And you can just imagine how many raffle tickets are being printed in a day so that at least you, I mean, see, like, 
it, it's kind of, you see, the reason why you get yourself betting and gambling in the name of you getting wealth is because you've lost the principle of creating wealth. This is not the route that we use or follow when we want to create wealth. There is a whole procedure. You see, creating wealth, first of all, it is intentional. Number two, creating wealth has actually takes time. See, what you're doing right here is actually you're trying to outshine your, you know, just want to outsmart the time. You see, you want to do it very quickly. You may find somebody having like 20,000 and be like, hey, tell me just go ahead and, <clears throat> and bet. Or get myself into buying this raffle ticket in the name of I can just I can I can get rich quick. That's the process. The moment you try to violate the rule, there is a system, there is a pattern that has already been put in place. What you do is to let the pattern and the system work for the betterment of yourself, not to MC. You cannot change the whole market, you cannot change the whole system. So these are useless things to buy the raffle tickets and the betting. And by the way, I always ask people why not rich and wealthy people don't buy those things? Because obviously they have the ability to go ahead and purchase like everything. Okay, I remember back then when I used to bet, I used to say like if I can get a certain amount of money, I can bet this, I don't know, we call it mega jackpot or jackpot or whatever that thing was, okay? And I used to think like, guess what guys, if I go ahead and bet, I can be able to... You see, this, just because we have one case or two cases of individuals who actually got wealth using this route, does not mean that everyone can fall into the place. And I love the fact that betting companies in Kenya, they always tell you like, hey, guess what? Somebody who should bet should be always 18 years and above and always make sure that you do what? You do it in a responsible way. Do it for fun, not doing for the basis of you getting wealthy and you get what I'm saying? It is good to be cautious and keen as far as betting is concerned. Otherwise, you can get yourself into a big problem. We go to the point number three or the third thing that is actually useless to buy in 2024. The third thing is not other than you buying something called, uh, you know, insurance policies. Insurance insurance policies. You see, this is another useless thing to buy, especially in this 2024. Why 2024 henceforth? Because the knowledge of investment is quite substantive. It is out there. We post it here. People, Other people post it here. We talk about money market fund. We, put, we talk about treasury bills and bonds. We talk about fixed investment income. We talked about all those areas of investments. Now, taking this money and putting in an insurance policy. See, see when you you see, if you live in a life of playing a assured way, a assured way, insure, there's even the insurance companies, they are not, who insures the insurance companies? That's what I always ask myself. Who insures them? You get what I'm saying? And, I'll, and I want you to think about this, you see? If, if they tell you, take, give this amount of money per month and do so, do people sometimes read those terms and conditions of these insurance policies? I have seen a lot of people who comes to my DM and telling me, Joseph, I lost a lot of money in this insurance policies because some of them do not have the discipline to achieve the 10 years, maybe if this goes for 10 years. If you break the, 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 the contract in between, you stand to lose a lot of money. That's a reality. So the fact remains, again, what you get, assuming like, let's say you are consistency and you have the tendency of doing so until the end of the policy. The question is this, what do you stand to gain? If you took, say, a money market fund in place of an insurance policy, let's say you took your that money and invested in a given circle let's say you took that money and invested say in something else like treasury bills like treasury bonds or something of sort like i mean seriously like you bought yourself some stocks or shares i understand stocks and shares might be a little bit volatile but the question is this you always ask yourself where do they invest that money that you give them and i'm gonna ask you a very simple question and i want you to think when you give them that money, do you think they put it underground somewhere in a basement, in a vault, and they close it, and then after 10 years they give you? No, they do not do that. They risk. And how come they tell you not to risk, play their sure way, and then they play the risky way? And we are all here on this planet. The fact remains, <laughs> there is always a version of two things. If either you are the employee of that business or you are the owner of the business. That's simple. So the fact remains, you go invest. For example, these insurance policies, they invest on these FDS, fixed deposit incomes. They invest on this money market fund. They invest on bills and bonds. Those are the areas where they invest this money. They get more returns. And then what they give you, maybe they give you like at 5% or 6 or 7%. They are getting at 13%, 14 15%. Right now, as we speak, Bills and bonds are actually ups of 16%. Now, who is losing the game? So this is an area where I always tell people, if you want to go the insurance way, insurance companies are great people. We love them. Go insure your car. Go insure your businesses. Go insure your health and all those kind of things. But, but things to do with policies about education, I don't know, life about... Come on, how about I invest by myself? I'm insured by my life. That, that's it. Why would you let me play the assured way? I see, these ideas is usually sold by to the these middle income as people and such kind of things. Come on, life is risky. If you want to play it risk-free, no, you can't. See, life is risky. 
All right? You have to do something. Uh, personally, I would prefer starting a business and insuring the business rather than giving them their money, then they insure me, and then they assure me that I'll be safe in future. I repeat my point. I prefer me taking the money, starting a business, insuring the business, and again, I prefer that rather than me giving them money, they go, they do the risk, and then they assure me that after 10 years, I mean, seriously, remember one thing, and never forget this. In every deal, there is always a fool. And if you can't see any, you're the one. It's as simple as that. All right. And I didn't say insurance companies are bad. I repeat, they are great. We need them. They are great people. We need to insure our cars. We need to insure our you know, health. We need to insure our businesses. We need to insure our apartments, our investments like rentals and what have you. They are great. They are good. They do a fantastic job on that. But this one's about insurance policies. And then they sell it to you like it's an investment. No. If it's an insurance, then insurance. If you want to subscribe to the insurance policies, do not subscribe it to it in the sense of... It's an investment. No, it is not. It's an insurance. Take it as an insurance, not as an investment. If it's an investment, think big. Okay, let's go to the point number four. Is buying designer clothes. You see, you buy designer clothes, clothes, and when you're barely surviving. I've ever met these kind of guys who shows up to these expensive places whereby they go design their suit, they go design whatever they want to design out there because they want to prove to people they are making money, they are rich, they are wealthy, life is okay. You know, they're eating, you know, we say in Africa, they're eating life in a, with a big spoon or something of sort. The, the point remains this. You see, there's nothing wrong with you getting those designer clothing and whatever. We love them. Those expensive perfumes you wear. There's nothing wrong with that. But do so when you actually put your house in order. You barely, you only two months before, you only, I mean, <laughs> you only two months to a broke life. But you're doing this kind of, I've ever met these guys, who, who, these guys who work in these offices, the fintech, the corporate worlds and what have you. These are the guys who they own, some, most of them are two months before. They, you see, if you don't pay them one month and the second month, they are borrowing. They are on a crisis. And you're buying yourself these kind of things. Come on. You see, there's something called um, delaying gratification. Just to delay the gratification. You see, live below your means. Channel the huge chunk of your money towards an investment. Then whenever you realize now that what you're making from the passive income is actually at the same level with that what you're earning, then you can contemplate even quitting. That, but do not push it along to a point whereby you can even switch off from what you're doing and you can eat and drink. That is exactly what you do. Don't try to hurry this gratification. Take your time. I always tell people, live as if you don't think, but you do, rather than to live as if you think, but you don't. That's the reality. That's a tricky about life. Let's go to the point number five. The point number five is none other than you having what we call subscriptions that are ex exclusively about entertainment. Subscriptions... Subscriptions that are exclusive about entertainment. I mean, you you do not have subscription about about uh, you know you learning acquire acquisition of skills and what have you. You see, it is good when you consume. Remember one thing and never forget this: the more you learn, the more you earn. Information. We are living in an era where information is money. So if you have something that you can share with people, they all they are always ready to pay you. That's the reality. So information is cash. So in, subscribe to things that you know can help you to earn more money, to subscribe, to grow, and also be able to do what? To do something greater in your life, all right? That one does not need much of the explanation, but you have to do something. See, the last one. The last one is none other than you having something called, you know, you subscribe luxury gym. Have you ever seen people who subscribe to luxury gyms, but they rarely go... <laughs> You know, you go and subscribe to that luxury gym somewhere. You will be going and uh, having fun and what have you. But you even rarely go. You don't even go there. So those subscriptions, you keep on renewing them. Some of them are couples. Others are like, you see, it is good when you make sure that at least you go subscribe to something that you know you're going to be using it continuously. It is working for you. There's something that you're aiming and such kind of a thing. So it's always good to make sure, check about those five things or those six things. And by the way, most of them, they may, may, they may seem as if there is nothing wrong with it. It is true there is nothing wrong with it, but there is totally something wrong with it or everything wrong with it because if you do not get your house in order as far as the cash and the finances are concerned, be very careful, keen and cautious before you subscribe yourself to those kind of things. Anyway, guys, guess what? That marks the end of my video, but never forget this. I always post a video each and every day. And if you do want to miss out my good video, make sure that you hit that subscription button and as well like the video, comment down below. And by the way, my number is always on the description of this specific video. People always ask me, Joseph, where is your number? My number is on the description of this video and any other video that I do post. Go grab it, shoot me a call. We can talk businesses. If you'd like to get a customized, customized and tailored information between us. For now, it's a goodbye and see you in the next one.